Hey guys, we are answering questions about iron and copper and how to feel good. So welcome, Barton Scott. Hey, thank you for having me, Chantel. It's great to be back with you. All right, so let's dive into some questions we've gotten. And here's the first one. So why is iodine so important? Iodine is incredibly important for many reasons, hair, skin, nails, even brain function. And the last one is is really surprising and really important. So they've found in studies that 96% of us, that even some of us that are already taking iodine are deficient in iodine. And what that means for mothers, for example, is if you're pregnant, and you give birth to a child and you yourself have an iodine deficiency, guess what happens to the child? Hmm. The the IQ is actually lower. Now, how much lower? Turns out up to 20 points lower. So the difference between 100 IQ and 120. And oddly enough, or maybe as it should be, between the US and Japan, the IQ difference is 100, is 100 versus 130, so 30. And they eat a lot more iodine. So my husband was like, every time he eats sushi, he felt like a million bucks. And we started looking at it and I was like, I think it's the iodine in the seaweed. So what is it about iodine that makes you feel so much better? Mm. Iodine makes us smarter and it makes our brain work more smoothly. Instead of all this chaos in the brain, different mixed brainwave signals, when they're there's a clear communication from the brain to the thyroid. There's a smoothness of operating. And when when you eat enough um, seaweed or other sea vegetables um, or you supplement iodine, you usually notice that you have a more effective uh, day at work. Your brain works better. Your thyroid works better. And it's just more enjoyable to think and do things and achieve things and even follow through on things. I don't use iodized salt. So I use either sea salt or I use, you know, Celtic sea salt. So because of that, I'm feeling like I'm not getting as much iodine as I need. How would you address that? This is a this is a great question. We get asked this all the time at Upgraded. And the the thing that I realized when I looked at the salt content of those salts is that it's never enough to actually replace the iodine you should be getting in your diet. Only people that get enough iodine um, are, is, is the country of Japan. And uh, even some of them like don't get enough daily, but they eat 80 to 100 times more than we do in the US. And their IQ is 30 points higher. And that's interesting because what they found is that mothers that are deficient in iodine gave birth to children that were up to 20 points lower in IQ. Um, and it's it's key for brain development, of course, but you, if it's key for brain development, you can guarantee it's also key for brain longevity, for the operation of the brain, for smoothness, for just enjoying the process of solving problems, thinking, working, uh, and so forth. So really important, and uh, yeah, that's a great question. Let's talk about leg cramps. A lot of people are saying, you know, I'm getting leg cramps at night and that it's a constant problem. What would you say to someone who is getting leg cramps? So I would take upgraded magnesium. This is a product that we developed and we've had a clinical trial on it and it has absolutely changed the game with leg cramps. We also have something called upgraded cramp relief at upgraded formulas. And it's really incredible to see how quickly these reverse cramping. Uh, when I myself have a cramp and I'm on a, um, it's almost always on a flight, like a long flight, I wake up and I take either the liquid or the capsules, whichever I have with me. And if, especially if I'm taking the liquid, it's just so fast acting, uh, because they both have our nanotechnology that it's straight in and it, the cramp is gone in three minutes on average. Um, and we've had a lot of people write in over the years and say the same exact thing, which is really incredible because if you've ever had a cramp, you know how debilitating it is. Even if the rest of your life is perfect, your finances, your marriage, your 
or your life, your all your relationships, you're very fit, all these things, you have a really bad cramp in that moment, like nothing else seems to matter. So I, I get that this is a, a huge pain for people and we absolutely have a solution. Taking potassium can help. I want to address that. But that is about contraction, not relaxation. So relaxation is all about magnesium. And if you absorb it really well, which is the whole thing that we do at Upgraded Formulas, then not only do you reverse the cramp, but you can begin to prevent the cramp when you absorb enough and you reverse your deficiency, which is why the cramp is there in the first place. What causes leg cramps? Mm. The causes of leg cramps, the number one, this might surprise you, the number one is not potassium, it's magnesium. The reason why is because potassium is all about contracting and magnesium is all about relaxing. So when you have a cramp, your muscle is obviously contracting, right? What do you need? Do you need more potassium or do you need something that can help you relax? So I really believe that most people get this wrong and they supplement potassium and we've been told all our lives the opposite. <laughs> um, the the real important thing to to understand is is what I just said and that are you absorbing the magnesium? I have to have both. If I want if I have leg cramps, I have to have magnesium and potassium. Yeah. If I take just the magnesium, actually my leg cramps will get worse. I have to take magnesium and potassium. I can't just take potassium. I can't just take magnesium. For me personally, right. I have to do both or I'm going to get light cramps. It's interesting. So some people do have extreme potassium deficiency and there can be some micro muscles that need to contract. And in, I mean, and in, in years of doing this, what I've seen when people took our specific magnesium, that wasn't the case. And this is the reason why we did the clinical trial. Now, we also have a potassium that uses the same technology and works super well. And people can absolutely experiment. And I think that's important. It really is important in your health in general to experiment. Take potassium, but also for sure take magnesium. It's, it's, it's the number one thing that your body needs to relax. Well, and I will say this. The foods that are really high in potassium, especially, you have to look at your diet too, right? Of how much potassium are you actually getting in your body? And if you look at what foods are good in potassium, they're dried fruits, there's beans, there's potatoes, it's squash, it's, you know, bananas, you know. And you might not be eating these if you're eating. Yeah, and if you're doing a right. low-carb diet or keto or any of those, you now are getting so low on potassium already because you're not eating those time. things. So for me personally, because I'm not eating a lot of these carbs, I need to make sure I'm getting my potassium as well. I think it's the ratio of that magnesium to potassium, and a lot of it's what you're eating as well. We look at ratios in hair testing, which is so important um, because it's not ever only just the mineral. This is a good point. And so sodium to potassium, magnesium to potassium, we look at these ratios in hair testing. With blood testing, you don't look at ratios, and that's one of the failures of blood testing. The other failure is, I mean, there's a long list, but for minerals, the best way to test for this, you know, do you have a magnesium deficiency and is this why you're having leg cramps is definitely a hair test, which... We also do as well. I don't know about you guys, but I am stressed. And if you're feeling overwhelmed this holiday season, then I get it. With all the family get togethers, it is just a relentless source of stress. But anyway, there is something that I've got called Stress Guardian. And it's actually made by Bioptimizers, the people who make the magnesium breakthrough, which I love, love, love. But anyway, they are literally made this new product. It has 14 adaptogenic herbs and it just regulates your stress. I just actually took some right this second. And it's awesome. If you go to stressguardian.com slash waste away and put in waste away for 10% off your first order, it's stressguardian.com slash waste away. Go there now. So when you're testing people, what are you seeing is the number, the top, if you had to pick the top five things that like, you know, over and over and over again, you're seeing these people 
what are they deficient in? Number one, two, three, four, five. It really depends if you're a person that eats super cleanly. If so, even sodium might be one thing you're chronically deficient in. But number one, I would say that moves the needle. The most important thing for in a way to supplement is magnesium uh, because it does more things in the body. It's more powerful than literally any other supplement that we're out of. And to prove that, the heart would stop beating immediately if there was no potassium or if there was no magnesium because it needs to relax. And that's part of the beating is the relaxing, right? Uh, potassium is the other one. Iodine, um, manganese is, is common. And then zinc copper being out of balance. It could be that someone needs more copper. It could mean that they have too much copper and they need more zinc or vice versa. So those are some common ones. So let's talk about copper. I had a guy who came on the show and he talked about copper. And for me personally, and a lot of other people I know, they are iron deficient. So mm. for me, every time you look at my blood test, I don't care. Are they, I, and I have to say for people, this is, are they iron deficient or do they think they're iron deficient? And this is part of what I wrote my book on. I'm so glad you said this for people. You're almost never iron deficient, even when your blood says you're iron deficient. And that's a huge misunderstanding. Okay, so let's talk about this because hold on, hold on. I have I I have my my test right here. Oh, I want to tell you something. Oh my gosh. So let me show you this. So I happened to take the iodine that you guys have. Mm -hmm. I took it right before my blood test mm -hmm. and I took it the day before. Mm -hmm. I had taken my iodine and my iodine was at 182 and they said my that 109 is the normal range and and they yeah. gave it, they put mine at 182 and they said it was high. <laughs> what would you say about that? Is that uh, don't right? even worry about that? Well, it tells you that it's absorbing. Besides that, it's not interesting because it's just serum. And serum serum's not interesting because unfortunately it's in the blood. Um, but that doesn't mean it's getting in the tissue. And so this is the reason why um, why we look at, at at hair because hair is tissue, and that's that's ultimately what we care about affecting. Okay, I am going to show you this because this is constant with my iron. So let's let's switch switch gears and talk about iron. My doctor at this point literally said to me, "We're going to have to do an iron." Um, What's it called when like they give you an iron and it's like your iron is so bad. He's like, and it's consistently bad. He's yeah. like, I have to do an iron infusion. So looking at this and looking, my ferritin is always low. My iron saturation is always like beyond low. Um, now, what, what, about you your, about? what about your TIBC? It, yeah. That one's in the normal range. TIBC. What does TIBC stand for? So, total iron binding capacity. Okay. Then yeah. that one's normal. It's 373. That's, so you have the ability to bind well. Um, what I would say is that we should also do a hair analysis. And the reason why is because it gives you the lens that is, here, here's what happens uh, that almost no doctor understands. Uh, even the really brilliant, otherwise brilliant ones, because they just were not taught this. That when you check the blood and the blood is low, what has happened in, I, I really mean 95 times out of 100, what has happened is the body was very, very high in iron. And then because it's so damaging to be high in iron in the blood, because it damages the, the, literally the arteries, it stores it into tissue. And then we don't see this. And then we test the blood here and we go, hey, you're low in, you're low in iron. Uh, you need to take this iron supplement. I mean, not that no one needs this. I mean, we have an iron supplement. People have begged for it for years. Um, I just always, always, always say, please do a hair analysis first because of this fallacy with blood. Blood will, especially with iron, because it's so important. It's the only element that carries oxygen in the body. The body conserves it, and it also doesn't excrete it. So there's something, and this is this is also is really interesting for people to understand. 
there's something called a uh, recycling system in the body for iron. And it recycles over 95% of your iron that you ever consume. So knowing that, is it likely that you would actually be low in iron? I don't mean, would your blood test be low? Would you actually be low? The blood test, like we talked about, lies when it comes to iron. So if you recycle 95% of your iron, 96 actually, would, you, would it be likely that most people would be low in iron? And the answer, of course, is no. Um, so when we know that, what do we do about that? And I, I think, again, it's checking with air analysis and, and checking often. Guys, I just want to interrupt for just a second, and I want you to hear Paul Saladino talk about why liver is so important. And if you don't like liver, we have another option for you. Your ancestors were eating liver. And the reason that this sort of wisdom has been passed down is because liver is very nutritious. It's basically nature's multivitamin. If you look at the nutrients in meat, they're great. You've got zinc, you got B6, you got B12, you got some K2. But if you look at liver, it really complements what's in muscle meat. And there are many unique nutrients found in organs, specifically liver as a powerhouse of these, that are difficult to obtain outside of liver. Like meat and organs are like peanut butter and jelly. They just go together. They're supposed to be eaten together. The easiest way to eat liver is just to do it raw. If you don't want to eat liver raw, you can cook it. But the reason that I like to do it raw is because there are unique nutrients in liver that are probably somewhat degraded when you cook the liver. This really is like the most nutrient rich supplements that you can find. And they are amazing. I have tried them. I absolutely love them. So just go to heartandsoil.co, use the coupon code Chantal Ray and save you some money there. So you're saying doing, if the hair analysis says that your iron is low, mm. then you would be like, okay, well, we do need to get iron. But if it, if yeah. blood one does, it's just not as accurate. Right. Right. And if the hair shows low and then you check the blood and it also shows low, then okay, sure. Yeah. Supplement it and then also test again uh, quickly, like in two months and see, yeah, where do you... One, how do I feel? Two, what's my energy level done? What's my mood level done? Uh, you know, how has it changed? Am I more relaxed or am I like edgy all the time? Part of the reason why the carnivore diet has made so many people edgy um, and aggressive is simply because they have too much iron. Iron is um, really archaic masculine. Zinc is also masculine. It's more neutral. Copper is very feminine. Uh, so copper is very creative. Iron is very, very like anger is associated with iron overload. In fact, they did a study with prisoners and the rate that they went back to prison, the recidivity rate was very high when people had high amounts of iron. And now this is true for so many people because we recycle nearly all the iron we ever take in because it's important because it's the only element that carries oxygen. And we don't want too much of it. So there's, I had this guy on the, on our episode, if you haven't listened to it, it, it the guy na is named Morley Rob, Robbins. Mm -hmm. and he's, he wrote a book called The Copper Cure. Yep. And the only time my iron, and I just, I don't know why I stopped taking it, but I started after listening to him, I started taking copper mm -hmm. and my iron levels came back right. The only time ever is when I started. Oh, okay. So, so, this so talk point. about that because yeah. I'm telling you 100%, okay? Every yeah. time I take a blood test, iron's off, iron's low, iron's yeah. low, low. I start taking copper. Yeah. Only time it fixed it. So this is, go ahead. This is really powerful. So what that means is that what I was just saying applies directly to you and you're not alone. Most people are in this boat. I've been in this boat where they have um, bio unavailable iron. And that means that at some point they were high in iron, then their body stored it because they were too high in it. And remember, we have that recycling system. So the body doesn't want to just get rid of iron. Um, it stores it. It's, it is important. But what happens is People go gray very quickly. So if you're someone that's gone gray very quickly or early in your life, for sure, this is you also. Um, and we can do the test to prove it. But the reason why is because it's oxidative stress and reactive oxygen, oxygen species. So storage iron 
What do you get with iron when you combine iron and oxygen? You get rust, which is gray. Outwardly, that's gray hair. Um, skin, you know, um, like really like pallor, like not having, um, you know, like youthful, strong skin. It can affect collagen. Now, copper, on the other hand, is like the opposite of all of that. You still have to balance it with the zinc. And this is why I love the hair analysis for that which we offer as well at Upgraded Formulas. So you you have a balanced ratio of copper and um, and uh, zinc and iron and copper. And when these are balanced, iron and copper, zinc and copper, then you have a lot, of, a lot of energy and you feel youthful. And you start to free up that stored iron. Mm, love it. All right, well, we are going to put the link in the show notes. And we'll see you guys next time.